when Stan Lane was brought in to replace Dennis Condry, were there fans you remember hating the change? How did it come about, and were there tough times at the beginning of the Stan Bobby era? Keep up the great work, and fuck Jim Hurd. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, well, see, here was the beautiful part of the thing. We were heels. They weren't supposed to like us anyway. So I can't remember any problem with the fans. And 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 it's not like they didn't accept Stan like, oh, we want Dennis. Because they hated fucking Dennis Condry. And they hated fucking Bobby Eaton. And they hated me. So it's not like, oh, he's taking... Dennis's place. We're not going to like him. It's all oh, they've got another fucking. He's probably a bigger gay queer faggot than that other fucking Dennis Condry was. Because look at him and he dances. I bet he's blowing beautiful Bobby. They're all a bunch of fucking queer. That's the kind of you know. <laughs> no, seriously, that I was know, the response. Yeah. So, so there was no backlash from the fans because immediately Stan had heat because he was associating with us. And the promos I cut praising him and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so there was, and that's the last thing we were worried about is, is problems from the fans. What I was worried about, honestly and truthfully, is how do you suffer and, and come back from the replacement of half of the best tag team in the, in the business? And which is what Bobby Eaton and Dennis Condry were in the ring. They were the best working tag team in the business, baby face or heel, regardless of what company. But... Stan had had so much tag team experience. He had so much experience in Memphis. So he knew automatically where we were coming from as far as style and whatever he'd had, he'd been not only part of a tag team, most of his career, but also part of a top money drawn main event tag team, the fabulous ones. Um, he had, he had done that as a baby face, but he had still had, had, had experience as a heel earlier in his career and really grew up admiring the heels more. Well, hell that's how he, when he bumped into flair, he got trained by flair because he was a heel fucking wrestling fan who looked like that in those days. Um, so he, you know, mentally he had it and we all, you know, even though we had not been best friends in Memphis where we all rode together because he was baby face, we were heel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we knew each other well enough and got along and even though we were different, so it, it, that was the biggest problem that I was worried about was how do you follow the best tag team in the business up? But thankfully not, Bobby Eaton was one half of the team. So it's not as hard as it sounds. Uh, and secondly, Stan was really a perfect fit for him in a lot of ways. So it was just a matter of. Figuring out what Stan did, getting used to working with Stan, and then Bobby could get his timing off of Stan, and I could come up with shit. Once I saw Stan as a heel that right then, instead of five years earlier, and saw what he was doing, then I could figure out a way to invent the shit that made it work with Bobby's and come up with the tag team stuff. So it, it, it wasn't nearly as hard as it should have been to switch. No disrespect to Dennis, but I have to think when you bring Stan in and he walks out with Bobby, it must have been like New Year's Eve for the Ring Rats. <laughs> Again, no disrespect to Dennis, but it did it did go from from more of a uh, a fast food lineup to a buffet there for the for the uh, young ladies. <laughs> Although, to be quite honest with you, I would Dennis Condry's. Um, production in in the day in 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 both the tennessee mid-south and even the crockett territories was remarkable i must say <laughs>